Welcome to the Point of Success Menu Setup Training. My name is Jeff Ward and I'm your host for this training. Here's how to use this training CD. You can play one or a series of the video segments for this training. We use real menu item examples, real world examples that you can use directly in creating your own menu. The best thing about the video training is that you can watch it and then do it in your own menu. Here's what you'll need for the training. First of all, install your Point of Success software. You want to do this because once we watch a concept in the training CD, then you can use that information to put in your own menu. We'll be using extensively the training booklet from the training CD package. The training booklet has information in it that we'll be using to set up the menu in the training. Be prepared to take notes. You'll also need a paper copy of your menu. Even if you know your menu frontward and backward, you'll want to have that menu handy for putting in information for your own menu. Do you have two computers? If you do, it will be a help to watch the training on one computer, like a notebook computer, and then use the other computer to set up your Point of Success menu. There are two versions of Point of Success POS software. The premium version is great for larger, busier restaurants. It includes features that make it great for all types of service, including quick service, table service, delivery, and pizzerias. The standard version of Point of Success is very affordable. It's a great system for point of sale reporting and control functions. In the training, when there are differences in the menu setup between the premium and the standard version, I'll be pointing those out. This is the Point of Success Office Manager program. You can access the menu designer by going to the Tools Center and scrolling down and clicking on the Design Your Food Menu link for taking orders. This is the Point of Success Food Menu Designer. First of all, we have several tools on this screen and, and areas of the screen that you need to be aware of. On the left is the menu tree for the food menu designer. The way the menu is structured, you'll have a top level menu, which is called the food menu, and then you'll have menus below that that will have selections uh, on your menu to allow those items to be ordered. You'll notice here where it says screen size 800 by 600. These are the screen size boundaries. You'll also have a, another screen size boundary that looks just like this that will say 1024 by 768. The reason it's important to understand the screen size boundary lines is that when you're designing your menu, you need to size the menu so it will fit properly on your order entry workstations. So in order to tell which of the screen size boundaries to use, you can look on your workstation computer and check the display resolution and knowing the display resolution, whether it's 800 by 600, 1024 by 768 or larger, will help you design your menu. Also, if you just want to do it by trial and error, you can put a menu button on the screen and then see where it lands in the, in the order entry program. Also in the menu tree, you have the inactive menu. The inactive menu is the section of the point of success menu where you can place items that you don't want to be on the live menu. For example, when you're adding an item to the menu and you don't want people in the restaurant to be able to order it yet, you can place that item in the inactive menu and then drag it out again and drop it on the menu when you're ready to use that item in the restaurant. The recycle bin in the menu tree is used for storing parts of the menu that have been deleted. So when you delete an item on the menu, uh, a button or a screen or, or a part of a tree, it goes to the recycle bin rather than being completely deleted. The reason we do that is so you can retrieve that part of the menu from the recycle bin without having to design it again. You'll notice in the upper right hand corner of the screen you have this yellow and gray area that says run and design. It's important to know which mode you're in, so always be looking at this to tell whether you're in the run mode or the design mode. Now it looks like you can click on this to change it, but you can't. Uh, below it says press F9 to switch modes, so when you press F9, then you're in the design mode. These two windows right here, the alignment palette and the component palette, we'll be using extensively in the training. This is how you place different kinds of buttons onto your menu screen. Let's press F9 again to switch back to the run mode and then you can see the button style screen. Button styles allow you to define how your buttons will look on the menu. We have four different styles, the standard style, the flat style, the curve out and curve in styles. And you can choose any of these styles you'd like, but be aware if you choose curve out, 
or curve in, then it's going to take a little longer to paint those buttons on the screen. The standard style and the flat style buttons will paint the buttons on the menu screen the fastest. My recommendation is stay with the standard style or the flat style. Saving the menu, you don't have to actually save the menu when you're finished designing part of it. All you have to do is remember that each item that you place on the screen is automatically saved into your menu definition. So, for example, if you delete something from the menu, change something, move, move it around, be aware that it's already saved so you can't not save it and abandon your changes. We'll be discussing the product center in detail and how to set up products as we define each portion of our training menu.